welcome jake and uh, i would like you know i'm just going to talk about a bit of my experience with csta so like all of you are here today at ctis since last year i was planning to be there in person for the csta conference and when the covid 19 pandemic struck all the plans were shelved right and uh, like you are apprehensive about the virtual conference i had very similar apprehension and to tell you another thing uh, joining the csta conference virtually meant staying up all night and i was telling jake that you know the first night i was so excited about learning more from the teachers and hearing of their experiences that you know it didn't drop off and that's when i realized that a oh, well virtual conference can also provide this kind of a platform for reaching out to so many more teachers and uh, obviously that was one of the motivations we were already planning this conference but that gave me a lot of confidence that we can do it too and uh, thank you jake and uh, another thing the you know the breakout sessions was another thing that i found really useful and i think yesterday seeing that and i would urge all of you today after 5 pm to be part of the breakout session it's a very good platform we can all talk discuss and also answer some of the questions that you had and uh, without standing between jake and all of you i would like to introduce jake who is uh, executive director csta computer science teachers association who will be sharing with us his experiences at csta thank you so much jake for being with us today over to you wonderful thank you so much for having me sonia it is so wonderful to be with you all um and and just like you said it uh it can be tough but i have my coffee ready and uh just hearing the last set of presentations was so wonderful and so exciting um so again thank you for inviting me i, I really appreciate having the time to be here uh, and and before I start, actually, I really just want to say a huge thank you to all of the teachers that are watching. Um, teaching is really hard, no matter what, and this year has just made it harder. Um, so I really just want to extend my thanks for all of the hard work you're doing to make things work in difficult circumstances. Um, and it is, uh, it, it really is an honor to get to share with you all. And I'm, I'm excited to share about CSTA. Um, there's some different ways to get involved. I have some links up here uh, to, to um, get to know more about what we're doing. Um, and I also uh, just quickly want to thank uh, the many CSTA Plus members who uh, support CSTA's work and make it possible for us to do what we do, along with um, our wonderful partners at uh, Microsoft, uh, as well as uh, Google and ACM, who are essential to making CSTA's work possible. Um, I know that CS Chala is a project out of ACM India, and it's been really wonderful to hear about its its work um, through through our connection to ACM. CSTA was founded by ACM as a way to support uh, K through 12 teachers. I'm excited to share share a bit more about that. Um, so when I talk about CSTA, I like to talk about myself, and I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see me. Um, but that was me back when I was a uh, a uh, high school computer science teacher. Um, as, as a teacher, I uh, was teaching a, a handful of different computer science classes, including uh, um, introductory computer science. Uh, and uh, I always think about my first week teaching. I was uh, a brand new teacher. I was in a, a computer lab where uh, there, it was very long and narrow and the desks were literally screwed into the ground. So I um, from the front of the room, had no idea what was happening in the back of the room. And uh, at the end of my first week of teaching, I was going through the classroom. I needed to install new software. In fact, I was installing sc Scratch onto all of the computers. And to do that, I had to go to each one individually, uh, restart it about three times and, uh, in order to get everything uh, set up. And I get to the last row, I'm pretty exhausted, and I see just a pile of keys from the keyboard all stacked up uh, in the middle of, of the table. Uh, and they've been popped out of all of the keyboards across the row. And in the, in the middle computer, a student had taken all of the keys from those five sets of keyboards and uh, forced them back in, spelling as many bad words as they could. And I, I remember seeing this and thinking, oh, this is so frustrating and also so creative at the same time. Um, but what I also knew is I needed help. I needed support in being a teacher. 
I needed support in understanding how to teach computer science. And the unfortunate truth was I didn't have that around me. I had a principal who was very supportive of teaching computer science. He knew it mattered in the school, but he wasn't sure what that was or, or how to help me out. Uh, I had incredible colleagues who were doing really great work in teaching their subjects, but they also didn't really know what computer science was or what we should be teaching or how to help me. Uh, and I was stuck and I was alone and I, I really didn't know what to do. Um, and then sort of through dumb luck, I found this incredible group of teachers, the uh, Chicago Computer Science Teachers Association. Uh, it was our local chapter. And I, I found myself surrounded by other teachers who were dealing with the same questions and challenges I, I had. They were trying to understand how we should teach computer science, what we should be teaching, you, literally what, what is the order? What are the things that students should learn? And how can we get better at teaching computer science? And, um, and, and really just having a community to learn with it, it makes such a big difference to know that I, I wasn't alone, that I wasn't the only person dealing with these challenges. Um, and the truth is, since I was teaching computer science, a, a lot of things have changed. In the United States, there's been a huge push for more computer science courses across the, um, across the country. There are thousands of new computer science teachers. Uh, Scratch is an example that we were just talking about has grown dramatically is, is in a much different structure and there's, and there's way more to do and there's so many more people teaching computer science. Uh, it really is uh, uh, amazing to see this growth and to be part of it in the work we do. But the truth is that despite all of that, uh, all of these new computer science teachers find themselves in a very similar position that I was in. We often find ourselves alone. This is what a computer science department meeting looks like. It's still very common for there only to be just one computer science teacher in a school, if not a district. Um, and that means that we still are struggling with those same challenges. It is hard to understand what we should be learning, how we should be teaching it and finding that community of support around us. Um, and it's, it's really interesting as, as part of my job and I'll make myself a little bit smaller here. <laughs> um, I actually get to go around the world to talk with computer science teachers. Well, at least before COVID happened, I got to do that. Now it, it gets to be more like this. Um, uh, this was an incredible group of uh, teachers that I met a few years ago in uh, South Korea uh, who were all teaching uh, computer science across all grades. And they shared the exact same challenges. It was so interesting to hear that the, the same feeling of isolation um, is is something that it really feels universal across our field because it is so new and so um, uh, so so uh, different from what's happening in other schools. And so at CSTA, we work really hard to try to uh, make sure that every computer science teacher can find that same community that I found, uh, if not a better one, and really focus on building strong communities providing independent guidance to highlight how teachers can learn computer, or how students can learn computer science and what order we should, we should teach it in and provide professional learning uh, so that we all can continue to grow as computer science teachers. And I'm gonna share a little bit more about what each of those look like. Um, so the first, first example of that is, in, is, is really in building this incredible national community. Uh, and as Sonia mentioned, that starts for us with our annual conference. Uh, this past year, we had a really outstanding event that was virtual, and, and really, I, I think that was better in some ways because so many more people were able to attend. We had over three, uh, just about 3,000 teachers uh, from every continent except Antarctica participate uh, in a really wonderful experience. We had, as you can see, uh, well over 100 different sessions where you could learn directly from teachers, uh, along with um, some outstanding keynote speakers. Uh, I uh, really enjoyed learning from uh, all of them. Uh, this quote from Linda Liukas uh, on the left is really exciting um, to me. I actually uh, originally got into computer science through creative writing and I, and I loved her take on what this looks like. Um, for those of you who are teaching younger students, uh, the Hello Ruby uh, series is a really interesting way to learn from, uh, learn, learn about computer science and introduce it to your students. But, uh, overall, it, I want to uh, just highlight that it was an experience and a chance to learn with uh, with teachers and 
Um, what matters most to us is from teachers. All of our sessions are focused on content delivered by actual classroom teachers sharing what they've done and what works in their classroom. Um, that doesn't uh, that that continues on uh, from the global and national level to local communities. Like I mentioned for myself, the Chicago CSTA chapter where I live was essential, and we have uh, now over ninety of those chapters uh, across North America, with more forming um, internationally or globally uh, uh, as we speak. Um, and uh, having that local community has been essential to supporting teachers and understanding what it is we're, we're teaching and, and connecting with folks around them. And um, I actually think uh, after this session, we're gonna have an opportunity to get together um, for a smaller discussion about what that could look like for you all, um, because it is so important to have space for teachers to, to learn together and to design professional learning experiences that are right for them. Um, to give you a little example of what that looks like from our chapters, uh, there've been some really incredible things they've done. Uh, here, I'm, I'm going to keep bragging about Chicago because it's where I live, but we, we had our local chapter develop a CS Ed Camp experience. This was a, a two-day mini conference where everyone got together, and at the beginning of the conference, you create this big uh, board for your agenda. That's the, the um, red board that they're all attaching things to, and people can go up and add ideas. It can be something that they just want to learn about or that they're interested in teaching, uh, and as a group, you collectively design uh, what it is you want to learn about and who has expertise in the room to, to teach about that and uh, bring that together so that uh, teachers can really uh, design their professional learning together. It was a, a wonderful experience. Everyone had a lot of fun um, over, over a weekend. Uh, and that can grow into even larger events. We've had a number of regional summits uh, coming up in a, a couple of weeks. Actually, our a group of chapters uh, in the Northeastern region of the United States will be hosting uh, their own conference uh, where similar to the, the CSTA uh, annual conference, they um, bring together teachers from across the region who highlight what they're doing. Uh, it's really exciting to see that that happen in, in smaller pockets where they can focus again on what is most useful in their set of schools versus what might what what might apply nationally or globally. Uh, and then we've also had chapters lead uh, what we call CSPD week events. These are opportunities for chapters to uh, create week long professional learning experiences for teachers uh, with a menu of options. And so again, it's about providing uh, real examples of what, what matters for teachers uh, and being able to then set up that learning opportunity for them. Uh, we really want to support you know, building the community and providing the professional learning so that we all can continue to grow. Uh, teaching is not something that you master overnight or even in a year or a few years. It is a craft that we are continuing to grow and support as we learn. Um, and uh, we need to make sure there are opportunities to continue learning. As you think about this, I want to highlight just a few key uh, elements that we found are especially uh, successful in teacher-led professional development. Um, and I'm going to actually change the shape of this so hopefully we can see that and see me. Um, the, uh, there are four, four key things we try to make sure happen in every single teacher-led professional development opportunity. The first is an opportunity to build community. Uh, create space to get to know each other, to learn about someone new and potentially make a, a friend who could be someone who helps you out or shares an idea later on in the year. Um, for this, I hope that folks are finding ways to connect in the breakout rooms. Um, get, to, get to know folks that are around you that are working on this. Um, it is so much easier to reach out and say, hey, I have a question or I could use some support if it's someone that you've met and, and have, have worked with before. Um, that is for me the most rewarding part of, of any of these experiences. And um, I, I really encourage you to reach out to someone, uh, someone new uh, over the course of this conference if you haven't already. Um, I'm sure many of the presenters would be excited to hear from you. Um, the second is what we call a teacher showcase, a chance to highlight uh, an example of what, what works in a, um, someone's classroom. It can be showing off a, a new project that they led with their students or um, uh, discussing a specific question that came up with their students that they wanted to learn more about. Um, and I actually want to highlight, it doesn't have to be something that worked. It is often 
uh, often just as useful to learn about something that didn't work as well from uh, from someone uh, who is uh, who who tried it out and can say, hey, this didn't work for me, or here's what I wish I had done differently. Um, that's a really valuable resource to have when when you're going to be trying the same thing down the line. And then there are two key takeaways we always think about. One is what is something that can be useful immediately? What can I try in my classroom right away? What is something I can use in the next two weeks? And then a second thing is something I can learn that might not matter right now, but helps me grow over the long term. Maybe it's a new field or um, uh, experience that you're not ready to try out in your classroom, but helps you grow and understand more about computer science or a specific thing that you're hoping to teach. Um, there's been a lot of interest recently in US classrooms around artificial intelligence. And that's the, the sort of piece that maybe is more for teachers to learn long term at first before implementing in the classroom, but is an interesting idea that you can continue to take on. Um, so the second thing I talked about was that uh, I often, as a teacher, didn't know what it was I should be teaching. And uh, again, that was a problem uh, across the US and around the world. And CSTA works hard to develop clear standards that present what students should know and be able to do across uh, their K through 12 experience. Um, and we have developed a set of computer science standards. Uh, they were most recently revised in 2017, excuse me, to support students uh, and teachers and designing learning experiences for students that uh, are appro developmentally appropriate based on what we know so far uh, and sequence the learning into a, a structure that makes sense. Um, so these are based around a set of core concepts and practices uh, that we then uh, create into measurable learning outcomes that are standards for students to learn. Um, you can see the core practices and um, concepts here. Uh, and when we take those and piece them together, I think of it kind of like Legos, there's a set of things that students should know or be able to do. And, and with our standards, we work to create, um, as I said, this measurable learning objective that will make it clear what students should be learning and be able to demonstrate at different points throughout their experience. Uh, these are broken down for us across a set of um, the core concepts. And then uh, uh, if we think across grade bands into different levels, looking at early um, K through two, three through five for us, um, and then middle and high school. Um, I encourage you to, to take a look at these. You can find them at csteachers.org slash standards. Um, and they uh, highlight what that progression is. Um, and what's really important for us is that as with many other things we develop, these are created by teachers uh, in partnership with experts across the field uh, in the university space um, and in industry to make sure that we're we are identifying the right content for students to learn, um, but with an eye towards what is possible to teach and what is the right uh, learning progression for students uh, across, um, across their educational experience. Um, the process for developing standards is is intense. It requires bringing together a lot of stakeholders and um, and getting into very uh, theoretical ideas about what it, what is important to learn and um, when you should learn it. But it really is a valuable process for teachers to go through um, and for teachers to lead, uh, so that uh, there can be more clarity around what it is we should be expecting students to learn. And the same is true for teachers. Teachers need to continue growing and learning as well. And uh, just this past year, CSTA developed a set of standards for computer science teachers uh, that highlight what a teacher should know and be able to do throughout their career. Um, and this again helps teachers understand what they can be focusing on and where um, they can identify professional learning experiences that align to those um, areas of growth um, or areas to dig into. Uh, they're uh, centered around these five key concept areas. Uh, and um, I, I can see that the, the uh, link is getting thrown in there. Thank you, Jason, um, if you want to learn more about those. But the things that I want to highlight are the um, ways that we support teachers and reflecting on what they know already and where they can learn. Um, and uh, by using a, a guide for reflective teaching, there's an opportunity to go through a checklist identify things that you feel confident with and areas where you'd like to learn more, and then use that as your starting point. 
Um, and this acknowledges that in computer science, um, unlike some other subjects, we have uh, folks who come into the field in really different ways, but mainly uh, they have experience from teaching a different subject and are learning about computer science. And that leads to different learning pathways. And, and we wanna make sure that teachers are able to support and learn um, and no matter how they entered the field or, or where they wanna go next. But what's important is this is a craft. This is something that will take uh, a, a career to master and we should always be looking for ways to continue to grow. It's not something that just one day or one summer or one year of professional development will prepare you for. It's something that we continue to strive to get better at and we're excited to, to be part of that journey with you all. Um, so I, I feel like I've been rambling for a while um, but I just want to close again by saying that uh, the most powerful thing for me with CSTA is that we're in this together, that we're a community that is trying to um, do what's best for our students and to grow ourselves. Um, and it's so much more meaningful, it's so much more rewarding, and it's so much more fun if we can do that together. So uh, I encourage you to check out CSTA to join. I mean, I'm really excited to get to connect with folks in the breakout session um, to share some more about uh, what what we've done that works or doesn't work um, and hear about your experiences. Um, but I want to say thank you again. Uh, thanks to uh, Sonia for inviting me and I'm excited to uh, to continue to learn with you all. Thanks everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Jake. And uh, what I would like to say is the last point you made that we are all in this together. And that makes so much more sense. And uh, also what you started with, right? That you felt that as a teacher, you were alone. And dealing with similar challenges, I and because I do a lot of work uh, with our teachers, uh, I realized that, you know, what we also look is for support from each other that, oh, this, how can I do this better? What What is it that has worked for you? And I feel uh, CTIS, you know, since yesterday and today has given such a wonderful platform. We've been able to get so many of our teachers sharing their experiences on what has worked in the classroom. And also uh, the insights that you provided that how a community of teachers can grow and become support. And we can all learn from all of this. And uh, to share with you, informally, we have it. We have master trainers in schools. We have WhatsApp groups over which teachers share their experience experiences and obviously CTIS has become like one big platform where uh, we received uh, since you were not there for the introduction we received more than 300 uh, abstracts and we had 14 presenters and it was so difficult you know to select those and uh, thank you so much for these wonderful insights and we will take the question answers in the breakout rooms and uh, over to you Shanti for the next session thank you Jake thank you thank all. you thank you Jake